Okay, so how to discover good keywords and how to discover bad keywords for your blog. This is very important. So here we wrote the keyword CMOS, and this amazing tool here allows us to access questions related to the keyword we're searching. So we write the weird word CMOS, that's a keyword, and we have a list of questions, and questions arise, and we have so many of them. And this is one of the questions that arises, why is CMOS good for the body? And you see here that this gets only 10 searches a month, but yet it's keyword difficulties at a 54. A keyword like this is what I would call a bad keyword. The reason why is because it's extremely difficult to rank for, and yet it only gets 10 searches a month. I would much rather rank for a keyword that gets zero searches a month, but has lower keyword difficulty. Why is that? Why would I do that? What's the logic behind that? Well, one of the ranking factors, once again, if you want to learn about the ranking factors, we'll just go over here, go to cashcownichesites.com. I'll leave a link in the description. But we have a course, a mini course on the ranking factors. And literally, there's over 300 plus ranking factors that we know about. But I've consolidated them into just a few so that you can un easily understand and consume that information. But one of the ranking factors that exist is authority. And even if Google sees that people aren't searching for something, the search engine still knows how to control for that keyword. Meaning, let's just say this keyword here had zero keyword difficulty. Let's just say in a, in a world of infinite possibilities, let's say it had zero keyword difficulty, but it also had zero search volume. Is this a keyword I would want to rank for? The answer is yes. If I'm trying to create a long-term brand, the answer is yes. Why? Search volume does not necessarily value my website, or excuse me, it doesn't show the inherent value of my website. If a keyword is searched for a million times, or if it's searched for 20 times, that doesn't mean the keyword is valued less. It just simply means there's less demand for it at that time, right? But that's an easy way for me to slip through the cracks and rank for something that larger companies don't look for. So if this keyword had zero search volume and zero keyword difficulty, I would still have content created so that I can rank almost immediately and very easily, but I would do that for the purpose of two things. Number one, authority, right? And number two, to serve a need that could potentially be in the future. And the reason why I said, if you remember one of the very first lessons I said in this free course, and you might be watching just a clip right now, but... Either way, I said this in the beginning of the course, is that the search volume here, I don't really care too much about the number. What I care about is how large is the number in comparison to other numbers. Meaning, if we have a keyword here that says, why boil CMOS, right? And it has a 22 keyword difficulty, which is effectively almost nothing. And it has zero search volume. And I have this keyword that has double the difficulty, maybe even triple, right? If if we were just to throw out fake numbers here, but it has only 10 search volume, I'd much rather go with this one. This one is easier to rank for. I have authority over it. And as soon as somebody searches for it, I will show up and I will serve that need. See, keyword research tools don't always provide the exact numbers for search volume, there can be someone who ends up searching for this, but it will show no results. Why? Because these keyword tools cannot account for literally every human being on earth. These are just estimates. They're just simply estimates. That's all it is. I'm sure there's people out there who search for why boil CMOS. I'm sure, I'm sure there is. And in the, in the Google world, there's something called adjacent keyword ranking. Google understands now the concept of the type of content you write, and they rank you for things that are similar or queries that are similar to what you intend. So for example, if I make an article that says, is it a good idea to boil CMOS? There might not be anybody searching for, is it a good idea to boil CMOS? But I might rank for this keyword as well. Somebody might search for why boil CMOS and then see my, is it a good idea to boil CMOS article? They might click on it. They might read it, etc. So Two features, like I said, of the reason why I would go for a keyword sometimes that doesn't have any search volume is because, number one, the search volume number is not indicative of the truth. It's just simply an estimation. Zero could mean four people a month. It could mean 10 people one month and zero people the next month, right? 
And it's, like I said, it's not 100% accurate. There should be searches. That's number one. Number two, adjacent search. I, my website can literally rank for keywords that are similar. And number three, I'm creating authority where it's easy to acquire because there's less competition. So this is what we call the base level. We're creating a base foundation of some articles that are very easy to, to win on. Some, and it doesn't have to be articles. It could be products that you're selling, right? Now, products are harder because products are linked to money. But in general, content, to create content like articles and stuff, that's easy to, to win pass through. And once again, get some traffic on there and, and benefit from that. So when you're utilizing this tool, one of the best features about this is the questions feature. You get the access to different questions, see what people are asking, and then provide value through your content, through your blog, through that. And that's, that's the whole thing is finding here ways that you can help people. If, for example, guys, if I'm a CMOS fanatic and I want to learn about CMOS and I want to learn about CMOS gel and all this kind of stuff, if I see CMOS for sale, that's, let's just say, I don't know, ginger flavored. I'm just, I'm just saying like, this is, I'm just getting creative here. You never know. I might buy it. But once again, the product has to be there. The value has to be there. And I have to reach the consumer some sort of way if I'm the owner of this business. So for you guys, you're thinking of creating a cash cow niche site, like we name our whole entire channel here. You want to create a cash cow niche site. You have to provide value. People are looking for certain questions. You're going to provide the answers, and then you're going to have the opportunity to show them your products during that phase, which is once again why website building is so important. Website building is so important. And for me, like I've said, and you guys have seen this millions of times when I've said this, but rocketwebbuilder.com, I do all my website building through. All 60 plus websites, and I have over 60 now, all of my 60 plus websites, all on Rocket Web Builder. Every single one. You guys have seen it before. I've talked about this. The templates. I've shown the tutorials. The click-by-click -click tutorials. Because it's so easy to use. And it does the job perfectly for me. All right? So you guys have seen all this. You guys know about this. But once again, people, people they look at it and they kind of just push it to the side. They don't care that much because they don't see the value. They don't see how much money they're walking over every single day. Every single day, you're just skipping out on thousands of dollars, right? And and maybe because you don't see it the way that I'm teaching it here, but now you guys are lucky. You're seeing it. People don't see it like this. People don't see that there's so much money to be made here. They're just simply walking past money each and every day, you know, surfing the internet, surfing through, my, you know, so much opportunity of money that they could make, but they're not going to because they're not being attentive tools like this help me become extremely attentive. I know search volumes. I know numbers. I know demand. I know keyword difficulty. I know SERPs. All these things drastically help me in the long term to create a fortune. And like I said, I wouldn't get far past 60, 70, you know, 20 websites. Even. I wouldn't even get past my first website if this wasn't valuable to me. But I did and I created so many. And some of you guys have seen some of those websites that I've built publicly. All right. So anyways, let's keep working on these lessons and, and let's keep going here. All right. Next lesson.